Oh, <laughs> windy out there. Hello, Mr. Barker. Yeah, hello, Mr. Handy. What's Miss Chicken up to this week? Oh, don't <laughs> ask. I think she's been watching too much daytime television. She's made an instant makeover machine. Makeover machine? Well, I could do with a quick makeover before today's show. I'll, I'll just take a quick peek. Can you see what's coming? Nothing if not predictable. Miss Chicken! <laughs> what? Where? Why? Hello, and welcome once again to Dear Mr. Barker, the fascinating fact show that answers your questions. And puts chickens in mortal danger. No, uh, no, I won't let him get to you, although you have been a bit of a cheeky chicken, haven't you? <laughs> what did she say? Well, you asked for it, didn't you? I did not. <laughs> I did not. <laughs> well, I didn't expect a blonde wig and frilly dress. Calm down, calm down. Come on now, let's have the first question, <laughs> please. Here it is, Miss. <laughs> I'm, I'm giving it to him. <laughs> for goodness sakes, just put the letter there. Thank you. Okay. Got lipstick on. <clears throat> Ashley and Jessica Smith, hello there, from Macclesfield, want to know how are horseshoes made? Well, let's have a look. Horseshoes are made of strong iron, which the blacksmith, first of all, has to heat. This makes it softer so it can be hammered into the right shape, although it does have to be hammered pretty hard though. Ooh. And it has to be kept red hot. The blacksmith hammers a groove around the shoe which shows where the nail holes will go. Horses need shoes to walk on hard surfaces like roads. And these edge pieces also help the shoe fit better. The horse's hoof is smoothed down by filing, and then it's ready for the new shoe. Now, that may look painful, but the horse's hoof is like your fingernail, and you don't feel anything when you have those cut, do you? One final file, and the horse is ready to trot away. Oh, a kiss for Dobby. And now it's time for... Yes, yes it's time to ferret out a fact about the tallest, <laughs> the strongest, the smallest, and the longest things, people and places in the whole wide world. And this week, it's the fiercest animal. It comes from most of Africa and across Asia. It's the honey badger, a night-loving animal which will attack animals as big as a horse. Its thick skin stops bees stinging, snake bites, and even porcupine quills from piercing it. And now on Dear Mr. Barker. Oh, oh no, it's Bong the Gong! Yes, Bong the Gong. Yeah. This is where I ask Mr. Barker your quick fire questions. If he gets yes. any wrong, Miss Chicken will Bong the Gong! <laughs> your time starts now. <laughs> Stephen de Cotteret from St. Peter's Port in Guernsey says, Who was the first man on the moon? Um, it was Neil Armstrong. Correct answer. Sarah Louise Bevan Diamond asks, What is the capital of Japan? Tokyo. Correct answer. Sean O'Reilly from Dublin says, how many holes on a championship golf course? Ooh, um, 18. Correct answer. Stacey Williams from West Glamorgan asks, what flower is the emblem for Wales? Oh, the daffodil. Correct answer. Eileen Brown from Letworth asks, where does the sun set, in the east or the west? Well, it, it rises in the east, so it must set in the west. Correct <gasps> answer. Stop the clock. Mr Barker, you scored five out of five. Oh, it's yes. a clean sweep, so the chicks will cheat. The chicks will cheat, the chicks will cheat, the chicks will cheat, the chicks will cheat. <laughs>
Off to the doctor. There's a bone, and there's a bone, and, and top. Hello there, doctor. Ah, oh, my dear Mr. Barker, what can we do for you this week? Lucy Howells, who's eight and lives in Bristol, wants to know who our dog's ancestors. Where do we come from? Well, uh, where were you before you came here? But I was at the office. Well, there's your answer then. You came from the office. I came from Scotland. Oh, yes. And I came from Bolton, although I studied at Cambridge. Oh. No, 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 no. That's not what Lucy meant. Lucy means where do we, you know, descend from? Oh, Who are our I ancestors? Oh. Nas the screams. Oh. Now then, all dogs are descended from this wolf-like creature which roamed the forests about 15 million years ago. In fact, wolves, coyotes, jackals, and domestic dogs like you and I are all related. We're all part of the same family, Callis. But why are there so many different looking dogs? Well, human beings realized how useful dogs could be and started training them up for certain jobs, helping them catch other animals, round up cattle and sheep, guard their homes, that sort of thing. Um, and as the years went by, they bred them to become better at their jobs. And so certain features became more obvious. Longer noses for sniffing and scenting, longer legs for running, and the thicker coats to withstand the cold. Wow, that's an impressive family tree. We certainly do have a lot of relatives.